This is Juliana Ranikar Breeze in Brighton, and I have the pleasure of interviewing Farah Edwards. Now, Farah is from Bhopal. Tell me where Bhopal is, Farah. Bhopal is in the uh, cent central in central India. It's in the very heart of India, and uh, all of you who have read Kipling must be must know that Bhopal is. Um, is where Jungle Book was written, and it, it's around that area. And we, um, we in Bhopal, are all. It's it's the most beautiful city, and it's not all about the gas tragedy. It's because it's got such culture and heritage, rich culture and heritage, which is really really um, uh, quintessential. And it's just quintessential in Bhopal because people still have those traditions that we follow. Um, there is a very strong woman presence in Bhopal because um, Bhopal comes from uh, a state where there were only women rulers. and the, Which is very unusual. It is, yes. And the only women rulers in all of a Asia. And these women were not, not women who were submissive and, and kept themselves under under hijab or covers, they were women who were out how, there. How did that come about? Well, these women were very, uh, the, the, the women only gave birth to women. And so they decided, why shouldn't we make our firstborn child, girl child, the, the ruler? Why do we have to go through this, that we have to have a male heir? So that is the reason that women were, trained and to be to be rulers of of Bhopal and the states around it. So how far back does that go? Oh it, this this goes right up to the 18 1800s so we we have several dynasties of of women ruling right. and these were forward thinking women they they thought about children's edu girls education did they study abroad any of them none of them studied abroad but they had private tutors coming from, from england england to teach them in bhopal right these women were forward thinkers they they only thought for the liberation of, of other women so they did as much as possible they could uh, for women no, and they were very very uh, far, far, far thinking because yeah. they, they all had already brought things into places that not many people in India were thinking of. But thinking what about of. arranged marriages? Were they uh, arranged marriages were very important? All these women were married. They, all the rulers were married according to their to status and 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 also coalitions because if you married um from from different parts of india then you then obviously the the bhopal empire would grow so yes arranged marriage was very very important then mm. and and you are from the royal family i am from the royal family my all... are, are, are you a princess well um i i don't lay claim to being a princess but i i am i I, I, I don't know. Somehow I don't feel comfortable saying that. But yes, I am. I am a princess. Yes. Well, you should be proud to be a princess. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yes, I am. I am proud of being a princess. But I think that ever since I've come to England, I've um, I've left the pride behind. <laughs> and uh, you have to. You have to. You have to grow. You have to grow with the times. I might say I'm a princess. But maybe I don't look like I'm not dressed <laughs> like a princess. Yes, but I mean, you're more. You're more. I think I would call you a queen and and uh, more than me. But the thing is that uh, it's what you do. It's what you, what makes you a princess is not is is what you do for the world. And I think that I am very much in close. Uh, I love the people of Bhopal and that is what's important for me not the show off and the and the money and the opulence I'm connected to the people I'm connected to the people who work for my family and that is where my that, that is the essence of 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 my book 
which I oh yes, your to you. forthcoming book. My, uh, do you have a title already? I don't actually. I I'm still. I'm I'm. I believe it'll come. Yeah, yeah. And and I think I have to one day just call out to uh, everywhere nature, you know, and, and and go to bed, and then wake up, and, and hopefully the name will come to me. But I have I have the stories. I have. And is it the story of your family? It is the story of my family, but it is also the story of um, of the people who worked to make my family who they are and who how they and how they live right now is because there are lots and lots of people who work for my family, uh -huh. and these people live in my. Compound. Compound in the house in in yes. the koti, it's called a koti. Koti. Koti, where where my my family lived. It's a huge house. It's a parts of it are about two hundred and fifty years old, and um, and parts Cute. of it are, are built by different architects. So one part is built by an Italian architect. Do you have any photographs? I do have a few photographs. I will look for them and and then I'll um I'll show I'll show them to you. And parts of it, so different different houses that have been built. So my grandmother, who was from um, Jansi, was married to my my grandfather. My grandmother was only sixteen when she was married to my grandfather, and she was bought and before she was bought to Bhopal, and she came on an elephant uh -huh. as as a young uh, bride of sixteen, seventeen. And uh, she wore one of the outfits that belonged to the Bigums, and it was. It, I still have that outfit at home. It's lying under my bed, in a suitcase, but I still have it. And she, I believe, you know, when you throw confetti, yeah. Uh, what I've heard that instead of confetti, they threw silver flowers oh. as the elephant walked. How beautiful! And, oh, just that image, just. And these are the little, and these are the things I'm going to mention in my book, the details. Yes, yes. And the details of the how the house staff got things together for you, got, got every, and they knew all the stories. They knew the stories I didn't know because I wasn't told all the stories. And I got all my stories from the people working in the house. Uh -huh. And they told me, about all the secrets that my mother or my grandmother would never dare tell me. So that's that is that is why I that is what is going to be in my book. I have to be very, I have to be very careful as well. Oh yes. Because I can't let out all the secrets. What sort of secrets? Oh, all kinds. Ooh, naughty ones. <laughs> naughty naughty ones and and sad ones and 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 I have a I have this piece of writing that I wrote about about a, an incident that happened in my family home um in in the in the eight, 1900s yes and it was really really devastating it it tore our family apart but and i wrote about it and uh, and there are many many such things that have happened because you know that that is what ro it's families life. are it's about life, yes and, and yours is a very big family it is a enormous family where where are cousins and uncles and aunts and everybody living together do you, do you want to show some I photographs of your ancestors i will show you some lovely photographs of my ancestors so mm, this is dos muhammad uh, uh, you have to hold it and dos That's muhammad right. was uh dos muhammad was um a, a general in in the army of uh, of of Aurangzeb, and he came all the way from Afghanistan, and he rode to India. And the story goes that Dost was a um, young man, and he was engaged to his first cousin, but he had quite a temper on him. And when he was engaged to his first cousin, the cousins parents were not very happy with the engagement and he uh, they broke off the engagement with him Wow! and that didn't go down very well <laughs> and he 
What did he do? He slit the throat of the of the new suitor. Ooh. And he then r- ran to India. So he left left Afghanistan and he wa- went on horseback all the way to Delhi. He, he it must have taken him several weeks and months to come and then he joined the army of of a, of the then ruling emperor of of India called Aurangzeb. And he joined the army and he started rising through the ranks. This was on your mother's side or your father's this, side? This was on my, my mother's uh, my mother's side and it, this, this, and I can trace his ancestry right back to about, to about 300 years. So yes, this is, this is the man who came all the way to, to India. and His name was Dos Muhammad. And those Mohammed then, we'd, he'd never heard of Bhopal. He'd never even crossed uh, any part of central India. But one day, Aurangzeb and Dost were, were crossing over the continent, crossing over India. And uh, they, they, they passed central India because, you know, Bhopal is in the heart of India. So you have to make, Bhopal has to be like a stopover because most places you go to, you cross over from Bhopal. And they were on horseback. There was a cavalry. There was, there were elephants and there were horses and there were cannons and everyone was walking through. And that's when those looked at these, the, the Deccan Plateau where, where, Bhopal is based and he he I think he found a real strong liking he just got this this is where I'm going to live and then he decided to establish himself in Bhopal and but this was not really Bhopal that he established there was a place outside of Bhopal which reminded him of the his house in back home in Afghanistan and he we're going to continue in part two. Part two. I can see us going to go on for quite some yes, time. Yes.